Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today we're going to take a look at my Troy built horse. Uh, yes, the hood says pony, but trust me, it's a horse. Uh, believe me, it took me a lot of aggravation to find that out. <laughs> buy wrong parts and stuff like that to find out this is not a pony this is a horse but uh, anyway I, I'm the one to put this hood on here it's exactly the same identical hood it's just one has a horse sticker on it and the other one has a pony sticker on it anyway I'm gonna tell you a story yes guys it is story time and it's a good one it makes me look worse. <laughs> I was mowing the other day, and uh, I was—I had this thing dialed in perfect. It was—I mean, you couldn't ask for a better mow. And I got in behind my wood shop, and. Uh, I was coming right in behind the wood shop. There's a ditch that comes down and goes underneath the building. And then I had to put a pipe in to run the water away from the building foundation. So there's a dip right in behind it and that comes off of the hill. Well, I was going straight to it and I got about a foot from it and decided to hit reverse. And don't ask me how the hell. I hit why I hit the throttle cable or the throttle instead of the brake to hit it into reverse. I hit the throttle and it blowed me right into the ditch and it crashed down inside of it into a bunch of rocks. Hold that thought. Sorry, he was driving by with the tractor and it was too loud and I didn't want to drown everything out. So he's mowing my grass today because I couldn't finish the, uh, the backyard and it's probably about 10 minutes worth of mowing left and we made a deal. He's going to mow for me, finish it off. So I get this one right and I don't know if I can get this one right. But what had happened was when it hit, it came right down on my pulley, my muffler and the bottom of my deck, and my, oh my, that's a loud deck. I think he's got bearing problems. But anyway, um, so when it slammed, it wedged a great old big rock into it and stopped the blade. I didn't know that it happened. So I got it pulled up out of there and brought it back to the shop and the deck wouldn't work. It acted like it was trying to engage but it, it wouldn't spin. So I found that big rock that wedged underneath that blade over there and I mean it was wet. I had a hard time getting it out. So basically it just stopped everything dead. Instantly. So I got it back to running and started uh, running again. And I did probably about uh, 10 minutes worth of mowing, maybe less. Uh, and it started, the, the throttle acted like it was being turned down a little bit at a time. So it got to the point where it has no power now. So I had to turn the deck off of it so I have enough power to get back over here to the shop door because I was not pushing that from way back there. <laughs> so that's where we're at right now. So I'm thinking that, and I hope it's not this, but a motor can run, a two cylinder twin can run and sound exactly like two cylinders, even if it's only running on one cylinder. So, 
it could be possible that maybe when I wrecked it down into that ditch that when it suddenly stopped it created a crack and then when I was running it just finally couldn't handle it no more and started getting lower. I don't know if that's the case or not. Uh, but we're gonna dive into this and find out what's going on with it. So the first thing I wanna do is demonstrate what's going on with it. It sounds good, but it's not at its full hot or full idle or um, accelerated. It's not accelerated as far as it's supposed to be. Uh, so I'm going to take the hood off of this thing, and it's as simple as a plug. You unplug your lights one-handed. And that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. It's a two-handed plug, guys. So we'll unplug that, and then you just lift it off. And set it aside. Now, because I've replaced this hood... I also replaced that tag. I cut the old tag out of the old hood and put it in this one. So the the original hood still has the sticker underneath the, this plate. That way I knew that this was it. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to pull these plugs and feel them to see if they're both hot. And they are. Now I'm going to leave this one. Let me get you all here a little lower. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and leave it off and leave the other one on and we're going to start it up and see how well it sounds then, see if it sounds exactly the same. And it does. So let's take the other side off. <laughs> Sounds exactly the same.
So now we need to check the spark. All right, guys. So now we've started it, and we uh, ran it with this one off and the other one on. It ran exactly the same as it did when I put this one on and took the other side off. So it ran exactly the same. So because it sounded exactly the same, it tells me that I need to check the uh, the piston to see if it's moving in and out because both of them do have spark and we're going to prove that right now so this one here we're going to call it number one i don't know if it's the same side but i don't really care <laughs> we're using it as just a reference for this video so we're going to put this on there and i need to put a new end on this thing to snap on there so we're going to look and see if we got any fire. All right, I hear gears too when it goes to shut down. So that's got me worried also. I hear a gear sound as it shuts down. So the only thing that's got gears in it is the motor in the bottom end. So uh, I'm leaning more towards their I broke something when it went to a sudden stop because it pushed the deck up into the pulley, stopped the pulley, dead stop. So it's possible that it may have damaged something and I'm probably going to have to go internally on this motor. So... Uh, I hope not. All right, so let's go check the other side. Let's plug this one back up. All right, so we're going to take this off. Plug it into there. And we're going to see if we got spark there too. You hear that gear sound as it shuts down? That's not normal. All right. So now the next thing we need to do is pull the plug out, spin the motor, and see if the uh, piston is going with the motor. All right, guys. So now I'm going to take this plug out. And we're going to check it out and see how it's burning. Seems to be burning pretty good. They'll get cleaned up before I put them back in. Alright, so now we want to take a long screwdriver or long rod or something plastic you can use plastic whatever and you just want to go in there until you touch your piston all right that one's working all right that one's moving so we know that one's okay so let's put this back together and take the other side out and check it All right. And that plug burned exactly the same. So maybe there ain't nothing wrong with that.
That thing's hard to turn. All right, so this one's working too. All right. So now we can eliminate that. I was worried about that. All right, so now we know that they're both getting fire. And that both pistons are moving. All right. So now we're going to check the filter. And it does look pretty dirty. I just put that in there not long ago. Let me blow that out before I take that off. The filter was dirty, or the sponge was dirty, but I don't see that being a, a big problem. Now, I had also, when that had happened, down here where the throttle cable comes into it, You got this one here is the choke cable and this one back here is the throttle cable. Well, it used to have one of these big old spring looking things on it. But look like that right there. Now, yeah, I'd rather this been on there, but what had happened was the plastic around this had melted in here because apparently this was a tight fit right there where it looks like it might have been tapered down and crimped into the plastic that holds the plastic inside this part right here well this was melted and it was out of there and every time i'd hit my throttle after i wrecked this thing was uh pulling out and not moving the throttle so i had no throttle control so I took this out and cut that a little shorter. I wish I'd had a little more, but it's pretty tight right here around this valve cover. But it, it's still working just fine. It's, you've seen I throttled it up and down, but it had melted that and caused that to happen. So I thought maybe uh, I had something adjusted wrong so um, maybe that's what's causing it but what makes no sense to me is the fact that i mowed for five minutes before it lost the power it was full power everything was fine i was going up hills down hills everything it, it just it just runs real slow now so I wish I had a uh, tachometer. I could check to see what the uh, speed is. Uh, but I know from riding this thing for three years or two years, however long I've had it, I know what it sounds like and what it's not supposed to sound like. And right now it doesn't sound like it's supposed to sound. So 
it just doesn't make no sense why it would run perfect for five minutes and then just all of a sudden stop running right. So that tells me that whatever is happening happened gradually. So, uh, I mean, it was like it was like I was taking the throttle and just bringing it down a little bit, and then another ten feet, it I put it down again, another ten feet, down again, until it was almost down to an idle, and I had to turn the deck off just to make sure that. I can get it back here. So, something screwed up in it, and I don't know what changed while I was driving it. Because whatever the change was, was while I was using it. Not something I didn't fix. So, apparently something else went wrong. So, I want to check and see if maybe there's a plug in the damn the gas tank. And no, it's clear. So the hole's not plugged in the gas tank. The filter still looks really good. So it's possible that maybe the fuel pump. But it's just, that's a new one too. I put all that stuff on there when I rebuilt this thing. So... I don't see any vacuum leaks that could be causing the pump to not work right. Uh, so I, I don't know what I'm gonna, how I'm gonna fix this problem because I don't know what the problem is. So the only the next thing I need to do is to try to get this one plate off, uh, and it's not the nicest thing in the world to take off these these brackets actually need to be modified uh, there needs to be about a five eighths or three quarter inch hole or cut out in the side of this thing because the bolt that you have to take this thing off is right there so that means you have to take this bracket off which is a bolt down here and a bolt right here and this side has the original bolts in it that are self-tappers, like they came originally. Somebody stuck a quarter 20 in there on this side. No, it wasn't me. I just stuck it back in there because that's what it was holding it to begin with. So I got to get this off, and what they should have done was made a, a cutout. It wouldn't have hurt that to have a little more cutout right there in a circle motion so you can get a socket in there and it only needs to be as big as the socket is drill a hole right there in front of that head of that bolt and that way you can get a nut driver in there on it because who the hell wants to keep taking all that stuff apart just to get to one thing so anyway i'm gonna have to take these off I could wrench them out of there, but uh, this side over here is a little closer and it's down further. So, uh, something got damaged. So, let me get this off and we'll be back. All right, guys, I got the shield off and got everything exposed. And got a little bit of debris in there grass but nothing major so you can see right there that it's melted it again but it's still holding but I'm not sure if I've got this adjusted right because I'm not real sure on how to adjust it so I'm gonna loosen that up and I think the way you do is put it in full throttle and then pull this back as far as it goes and then tightened it down. And that should have it right. Blow some of that grass out there. Grass is bothering me. Still in there. Uh 
but either I can't see the picket, <laughs> I can't get a hold of it. It's inside that spring. So I'm gonna loosen that up and we'll uh, try to readjust that and see if that changes anything. All right, so now we're gonna take and pull this back. And it is. I can't get it to move. All right, so it is all the way back. I'm not sure about the choke. So let's tighten that down and see if we got it right. All right, so let's pull the choke and see what it does. All right, so that should, should be it. All right. So let's see if that made any difference. think that actually fixed it guys uh, I had to choke it still doesn't make no sense why in the world it would have changed after uh, after I did it but I want to point out something here yes I'm getting ready to complain about the person who designed this machine he's not very smart Why on earth? Let me get you in a good position here. Get my light. Alright, why on earth would they route these cables in on the low side? Because you have two options. You can put this cable to this one up here and the throttle cable to this one up here and hook it right there. And look how far it is from there to the manifold or the exhaust pipe or tailpipe. Or no, that'd be the exhaust pipe. Exhaust pipe's before the muffler. Tailpipe is after the muffler. All right, so anyway, now that we got that right, why would they put that there and have all that heat up against that? These should be over here. So, I'm going to see about taking this and moving these over to here. And I'm going to have to make sure I got those correct. Now, uh, it is going to change the direction of your choke and your... Actually, I could probably just leave the choke over here. And just move it up here into the top slot and then take the throttle and move it around to this side. And like I said, it'll change the, uh, the orientation of your throttle because then it would be backwards. So when I push up, it's to speed it up. If I change that, then it would be down to speed it up and up to turn it to idle. But I got to get these off of there. These should be higher than that. But that's, that's a design flaw right there. You never put plastic close to your muffler. 
That's crazy. So, it's laying right on it. And when you put that shield in there, it, it lifts it up and puts more pressure on it and lifts it up about that far. Well, the, the uh, plate is actually hitting the exhaust, but it's not bent. So I wonder if I bent my muffler. Muffler mount don't look bent. Muffler looks like it always has. So, but that's how we fixed it by just readjusting that choke. Now, I'm going to test drive it and see how she runs and uh, see if we got power back. And I'll tr probably run it for about five minutes. And I've got a few places here I need to trim up. So, now, learn from me, guys. I'm here to tell you that running these mowers without eye protection, for me lately, has been a moron move for me. Uh, I've, have, I've had something in my eye for the last two months. I've had three different doctors digging in it, trying to get it out, and it's right up in the very top right here, on top of that flip. None of them know how to flip my eye. I can't do it, and even if I could do it, I can't see because I gotta have my glasses out of the way. So <laughs> you can't even use a mirror. It used to be I'd use a mirror and, and get it out myself, but I can't do a flip. So anyway, I've been wearing these. I found these things online and I said, well, these will go over my glasses. And they actually, uh, they work great. They don't fog up. They're vented very well. Uh, might want to get a set of those. I mean, yeah, you look retarded for to ride your mower. But you know what? After I'm done being retarded, guess what? I'll be able to see, right? So that's the way I'm looking at it. But I need to tighten this up a little bit more. All right, we're going to go riding. They go right over my glasses, looking stupid. Then I put on my ear muffs, because this thing's god awful loud. I'm gonna test this bad boy out without a hood. Can't get no better than that. To be honest, guys, how retarded do I look? <laughs> I'm probably editing this video laughing my ass off. But look how retarded he looks. So anyway, I have a problem with my camera here moving on me. I got another one down here below you. It just fell over. Anyway, um, so basically the fix was to just readjust the choke. And yes, that's hot. I don't like the way that wire... I understand why that piece was on there, this piece right here. Uh, so now that I know that this is an issue because you see how bent that wire is right there that's too much pressure so i'm gonna have to go ahead and get the other one because this wire is supposed to go up there further so the less you have sticking out the better off you are and it keeps that wire straight so i had to cut about an inch off of it so, uh, I can get another one of these for 16 bucks. So, that's probably what I'm going to do. 
Uh, however, MTD or or um, yeah, MTD they want uh, from Troy built forty bucks, forty dollars and six cents. I think it was. <laughs> That's really stretching their greed uh, to add six cents to it. Come on, man. But that cable's not worth no 40 bucks. I'll put my own cable on it and be done with it before I spend that much on it. But you kind of want it to look the exact same. You don't want to put some aftermarket stuff on there. You want to try to keep everything as original as possible because I haven't got everything original. So we need to remember that we don't want to push down on that too far because that wire you see how it's still bent but it's not as bent as it was so i'm just going to have to get the right throttle cable to put there um, and it just takes two screws take that off pull this off of the handle and pull it down out of there and put the other one in this thing's 25 inches long uh so i'm just going to have to wait until I can get some money and get another cable for it. But right now, that'll work. Uh, if worse comes to worse, I'll just uh, take some kind of a real thin tubing that's uh, metal or aluminum or something and make it so that I can crimp it to the metal part that's sticking out. But that that means that uh, I'm going to have to readjust that and cut that Z-bend off of it in order to get it on there. So <laughs> I think it's best I just look for another, uh, get the other cable and be done with it. So uh, I'll button this back up and you see it works perfect. Uh, it's back to running like it's supposed to. So anyway, Y'all have a good one. Later.